Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about correlation briefly and then why it, it's not the same as causation. Okay, so it is very tempting to look at a correlation and take some causal mechanism from that. So, let's briefly talk about correlation so we can get what we're talking about here. Okay, so, so a correlation of one is a perfect positive relationship. At one, a variable increases, the other one does. So the outcome tracks perfectly with the predictor. A correlation of negative one, that's the opposite. As the predictor increases, the outcome decreases. It perfectly in a straight line. You've probably seen it before. Um, in most real world data, it's going to fall somewhere in between those. It's not going to perfectly track in a straight line either way. So, yeah. Okay, so causation. Causation is the statement that one, the predictor causes the outcome. So, like in a mechanistic fashion, like a, a gun shot wound causes death. That, that's obviously causal. We're saying one event preceded the other and was the, the reason it happened. Whereas in correlation, we're just saying they track together in a straight line when you plot them. And we don't really know why. And I'm going to list the reasons, the alternative explanations that can be true other than a predictor cause and outcome. And that's not to say the opposite, that correlated variables are not causal. I'd, I'd never suggest that because something correlated one can't cause the other. I'm saying there's not sufficient evidence. It is an irresponsible conclusion to just observe two variables, do a, a correlation between them, and say one caused the other. It is more of an epistemolog epistemological idea rather than a statistical idea. Although we're going to give statistical reasons why the correlation is not necessarily causation. And, and you, can, you can find examples of spurious correlation all over the internet where like movie tickets get correlated with, uh, I don't know, brain deaths. Okay. Okay, so one big problem is there's a third variable. There could be a third variable that you're not observing that it's causing both things to happen. So there could be a, a fire truck that is in a fire and the amount of damage caused by the fire. It The fire trucks are not causing the damage. Well, at least not the, the majority of the damage at the fire. The the third confounding variable that you're not necessarily looking at is the actual fire. And if anything, the, the fire trucks are reducing the fire. But it, that's a complex relationship. Reverse causality. The, um, Let's go with the, the the size of the fire and the damage. Actually, that doesn't make sense. The damage with the fire trucks and... Okay, let, let's say the fire trucks did cause the damage to the building. It would... Okay, I'm flipping. Um, so, the, the fire... 
We could say the fire truck caused the damage to the building, but we can also say that the fire caused the fire truck to come to the building. Okay, I don't know if that pan that's panning out, but anyway, in the observational research, you can't get the direction of the causality. You don't you don't know which one causing which. You can only tease that out through an experimental design, unless you have some temporal offset, but that still doesn't fix your confounding variable. And another third reason is that it could just be coincident. Some things, if you look at enough relationships and correlation, you will find effects that don't exist. Like things that are clearly unrelated being found to correlate highly together. And and you can find it now on the internet if you Googled it. I think there's a guy named Tyler that had a whole website dedicated to it. Um, so, the danger of assuming causality from correlation is it's bad science. And it's bad decision making. You, you may think that you can change an outcome by changing a predictor. Because of the correlation. But if it's not an actual causal relationship, you may be doing things that you don't anticipate. Because you need to modify causal relationships, not correlational relationships. So it, it's basically bad decision making and it may have unintended consequences. So, how to establish causality? The best thing is randomized controlled trial. Do an actual experiment and try to establish causality. Of course, you can't always do that. You can't assign people to things that harm them. You can't assign people to multi-year studies without significant investment. You can't, and you can't often, you can't assign people to like different diets and things like that. If you don't know that they're going to adhere, and even if they did, like... You can't control people's lives to the level you would you might want to in a controlled trial. So there's definite limitations, but when you can do a randomized controlled trial, that is fantastic. Like I alluded to earlier, you can do a longitudinal study, but that would get the effect over time. It doesn't fix everything, but it fixes something. Statistical control, it can help you weed out third variables. Of course, there's infinitely many third variables. There could be a fourth variable, a fifth variable. And even with a expert knowledge, that's always a possibility. That's why randomized control trials are so important. And experimental man manipulation gets back at the randomized controlled trial. You try to eliminate all other possibilities in an observed way. But it's not something you can always do. Many times you have to look at data over time, like in the research that finally concluded that smoking causes cancer. That's obvious to us now, but it wasn't back then, and I know there's a big controversy about the uh, tobacco people, but even then, it's very difficult. You can't assign people to certain lifestyles. Okay, so that's all I had to say, and that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.